Biden says he hopes to vaccinate 100 million people in the first 100 days in office. And Liz, if that happens, it would be a huge accomplishment. It would, Jim. Tonight in the second part of our special report, CBS 12 News is looking into whether Operation Warp Speed might have established a blueprint for combating disease beyond COVID-19, maybe even some of the deadliest conditions humans face. Here's the I-Team's Mike Magnoli and Danielle Wall. When you get a diagnosis and the disease has no cure, the path ahead is uncertain and scary. Add a pandemic and the fear can be all consuming, but you are about to meet two women who have hope that we can go from COVID to cures. Right now, there are more than 6,000 diseases in the world that don't have one. How are you feeling today in general? Today I'm feeling pretty good. Like I said, I just had my infusions. There are days when Boca Raton mom, Jennifer Gutierrez can barely get out of bed. Sunshine helps. Today's a good day. Today's a really good day. Her multiple sclerosis flares up. She loses feeling in her body. Simply moving is sometimes impossible. Constant. Other symptoms include tremors, brain fog. I pray every night that they come up with a cure for MS because living with it is the most horrible thing you can you can do. Jennifer was diagnosed 15 years ago. Since then, she's gotten monthly injections to keep her MS from progressing, but they also suppress her immune system, putting her at a greater risk for getting COVID-19. If I got COVID, I probably would not survive. These days, Jennifer rarely leaves the house except for an occasional walk around the neighborhood. Like getting a flu vaccine. But the pandemic could be bringing scientists closer to a cure for MS. BioNTech, the German company that developed a COVID vaccine with Pfizer, is reporting a breakthrough. Based on the same mRNA technology used to make the COVID vaccine, scientists have developed a formula that seems to reverse autoimmune diseases like MS in mice. It sounds great, but I'm very, um, what's the word? Part of my disease is I have a loss for words. Um, Hesitant? Hesitant, that's the word, to do that, because I don't want to be a guinea pig. Look straight ahead. Mm -hmm. That nervousness is something that doctors at GEM Research Institute in Atlantis have to deal with all the time. But so-called guinea pigs are critical to every human drug trial. Without volunteerism, uh, there's no progress. Dr. Mark Goldstein is a principal investigator at GEM Research focusing on Alzheimer's. I'm very encouraged that within, well within my lifetime, I hope, uh, we will have a cure for this terrible disease. In order to get there, patients must be willing to try experimental treatments. Tens of thousands of Americans stepped up for COVID vaccine trials, a spirit Dr. Goldstein says is carrying over to other illnesses. We are seeing a definite rise in, in people who are willing to participate, understanding that not participating is, is not the answer. You can be part of the solution or you can be part of the problem. Jane Burnham is committed to being part of the solution. I still say ouchie every once in a while. Four years into her Alzheimer's diagnosis, Jane's volunteering in a clinical trial exploring whether monoclonal antibodies will attack the plaque in her brain. We got married in 66. I like this one. She and her husband Jim are convinced this treatment is slowing the progression of Jane's memory loss, buying them more time years. together. Uh, we met when we were 16 years old in high school. <laughs> this woman's loved me for 50 years. I'm just hoping and praying that things happen so the disease can go away. And I hope I'm part of that. I'm Mike Magnoli in West Palm Beach, and this is the 21st Century Cures Act, legislation signed into law by President Obama in 2016. It invested $6.3 billion dollars into finding cures for patients like Jane and Jennifer. And we saw what a huge investment in stopping COVID was able to accomplish, so the I-Team wanted to know, might we be able to do it again? Yes, uh, and we're gonna focus on these vouchers. Florida Congressman Gus Billarakis helped to author the 21st Century Cures Act with special attention to sections dealing with Parkinson's disease. He says giving drug companies tax breaks is critical to finding a cure. You have to incentivize these companies, otherwise they're not going to 
go through the process because it's too expensive and too time consuming. Parkinson's is the fastest growing neurological disorder in the world. But right now, Parkinson's research only gets $200 million a year in funding. In 2020, we spent upwards of $3.5 billion on COVID research. And as COVID got more money, it also got less red tape from the FDA. The congressman says that's as important as money to the success of these programs. The Operation uh, Warp Speed uh, has proven that there's too much bureaucracy there with regard to the FDA. I mean, this is really almost a miracle that we got this vaccine within a few months uh, where it usually takes five to 10 years. So we need to uh, commit to something like this. And, and, and we have the framework, we have uh, the model. Two models, if you think about it, the 21st Century Cures Act and Operation Warp Speed. And after the 21st Century Cures Act passed, first year out of the gate, the FDA approved a record 59 new drugs. Jim, Liz? So, Mike, what is the normal amount of um, drugs that the FDA approves every year? Annually, you're talking about 25 to 30. So here comes the 21st Century Cures Act, and it doubles. Wow. And these are big medical programs. How does Congress view these? Has this become a political issue, a partisan one? The parties actually unite behind causes like this. When the 21st mm -hmm. Century Cures Act uh, was up for a vote on Capitol Hill, on the Senate side, it was 94 yeses. And in the House, 392 yeses, only 26 noes. So both Republicans and Democrats uh, realize how many people are rooting for programs like this. Jim, All right, great, great work there. Okay, if you have missed part one of this investigation, COVID to Cures, we have posted it at our website. Just head to CBS12.com. You can look on the iTeam tab. It's at the top of our homepage.